All right, welcome back to the show. Switching I, gears once again. Yep, we are. But I think this is our home stretch, which I look okay. forward to because then I can envision a large slice of pizza or something right after the show. Make it vegan. Exactly. <laughs> Making it vegan. We might get into that. I'm not sure. We've Did got. Did you know that vegan has become a human right now? What, to be a vegan? Yeah, it's actually now part of the human rights code. So now it's people like you can no longer be persecuted? That's correct. Isn't that awesome? Well, that's good news. <laughs> now let's ask our guest, Reverend Janice Christ, for what she thinks about all that. Are, are you a vegan, Janice? No, I'm not, but I am celiac, so I think we sh- too should have rights. There you go. <laughs> so you can't eat wheat. That's Is that right? right. Really? Yes. Yeah. So it's a gluten-free diet for that's you? That's right. Yeah. I just you know it's it's just a great thing because it shows I mean it's I think it's a lot in alignment with what you of what you do because it shows a an acceptance a sec, an acceptance and then a moving into uh, another level of awareness as we're allowing people to you know to um be okay with being who they are without making fun of them. Sure. <laughs> yes it is. <laughs> but I don't know. Um, it's food. It's food which I, we like. We just need right? wholesome food. We do. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's get into what okay. you're, what you do, Janice. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, you brought this book, and I saw it on your website earlier. Mm-hmm. Make it happen, mm-hmm. right, Reverend yes. Janice Chrysler? As soon as I saw that, I was like, I want to look at that book because I love the name. Yeah. It's great. That's just a way of life. Is it? So yeah, sure make is. what happen and why? Whatever in your life. Um, I take this book as uh, kind of a story of my life and everybody else's life. Now, not that I mention myself in there at all, um, but just know that I have lived everything in there and other people I know have. I take the first part of the book talking basically about our minds, how they work. As a certified hypnotherapist, Mm -hmm. I talk about the conscious and subconscious mind Mm -hmm. and are you a positive person, negative person, and how that affects what you do every day in your life. And a lot of people don't take time to really pay attention to how they think and how that creates a reality so that's pretty heavy so that don't worry about that they'll be gone in a few oh minutes. sure it just makes, makes it very real it does make it very real <laughs> so I, I kind of do that and it's to help people take a look at themselves yes. and then I move into what is it that brings you joy what's your passion in your life um, we all need to be motivated by something to, to find true happiness in our mm-hmm. life. And mm-hmm. a lot of times uh, when I do workshops, and if I say to them, list six things that make, bring you joy, whether it's something you do now or as a child brought mm-hmm. you joy. And they have a really hard time mm-hmm. listing that. And then it's, well, out of those things, what do you do now? And why don't you? How can you do those things, bring them back into your life? So that's what I try to get people to just ask themselves those questions. Then teach meditation and so that you can focus on that and make it your reality. Are people, um, in your experience, um, are people afraid to be alone with their thoughts? Because, and the reason I ask this is um, about a year ago, I, I read that there was a survey that said that people would rather have electric shock than be alone with their thoughts exactly and and especially now i think when we have so much social media and everything uh, they they just don't take that time to be still and just to listen and people say to me that i can't they can't meditate because they have too much going on in their head and i said well then you need to meditate even more that's more yeah absolutely um, it, is find out who you are mm. and connect to that beautiful being that you are and then you get more power in your life you empower yourself to create the world that you want and this yeah, is what yeah. this book helps us to mm-hmm. do, which exactly. is really, really important. You know, when you do that, less need for medication, oh, you get yes. better sleep, right? Right. So all of those expenses, because medication can be expensive, and, and all of those, it, you, your life just becomes a lot. I don't even know what electroshock costs, but it's probably expensive, right? Well, Especially with the hydro rates in Ontario. That's right. And it would hurt. It would hurt. It hurt, <laughs> and right? Then, and then you'd probably need to be buying all kinds of creams or whatever for any pain that you're going to experience afterwards. You from know it a too. lot about this stuff. I uh, know. Well, I don't actually. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not going to demonstrate that, no, are no, we? We're not. That's a whole other show. That's a whole other time. No, but no. you know, this is a, a much more uh, speaking of holistic uh, mm-hmm. approach to to dealing with a, a lot of the stresses and things that we do have, and it's and it's only getting more stressful. Yeah. Well, in the book, too, I touch on the, th- uh, the fact that there really are, like, three main questions that answer 
everything in our life and direct where we go with it. And the first one is, who am I? And a lot of people don't even want to ask themselves that. But it's, who am I? And then from that, that determines what is it I desire and what is my purpose. And how you answer the very first question will determine the answer to the other two. I can't even imagine answering that first one. Like, how do you answer that? You who just, am I? Who am I? You just usually through meditation. And then the first thought that oh. comes to you, a lot of people identify themselves as being a mother, or father, brother, mm -hmm. sister, mm -hmm. or their maybe career. a job, their career yeah. is. And that's why there's so much depression when, especially say in a, if they're CEO of a company and their job gets cut, yeah. then they're nobody. And there's oh, yeah. suicide because yeah. now they don't feel yeah. they're anybody. Yeah. But, but we're all more than that. So to me that's what your spiritual journey is about your spiritual evolution is discovering who you really are and what you're here to do and uh, and we all want to know what kind of what's my purpose we kind of go through that every once in a while and you may may ponder on it and um, and then there's others that think of it only for a moment and then ah, the heck with that I'll go get a drink <laughs> yeah. you know and uh, that's that's who you are in the moment <laughs> which is all right I guess right. but um, it does all come down to that like how you feel about yourself you move interesting, forward with it. interesting now how'd you get into all this stuff what's your story what's my story I know and that I'm you got a it. radio show going on in your house yeah. Not really, but you should. <laughs> yeah, we should. I don't know how it would be rated. Do you have, do you have plans to build a spaceship? No. I'm just curious. No. Just a random question. Cause no, no, I don't. I'm not planning on beating you know people what, up to one. But you know what either. I love? It's that you took that question so seriously. <laughs> you, you, no, it, she handled it well. You, very. It was yeah. almost. I felt almost like you had asked her. This was a, a, um, a continuing conversation, and, and and so you weren't surprised at all with the question. But you've never even heard such a good for you. I've heard a lot of things. That doesn't matter. Um, wow. Well, I don't know. I. Th Honestly, as, as kind of cliche as it may sound, I really feel I've been on a spiritual journey all my life. I can remember at a very young age kind of asking those big questions mm -hmm. and other people thinking I was a little crazy maybe for asking mm -hmm. it. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I actually met someone who uh, taught me Reiki, energy work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. from that, I meditated more than I was at the time. And so then I started teaching classes, various workshops and self-empowerment that brought me into being interested in hypnosis and to, to help people, not a stage hypnotist, but to help people overcome various challenges they may have in their life. Um, and from that, I found that about 90% of the people that came to me ended up, um, we ended up doing past life regression. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because my husband kind of uh, put the little uh, label on them as being closet regressioners because they come and say they wanted to do weight loss but when they got in to see me at one-on-one -on -one, I would can we do a past life regression I just didn't want my friend to know that's what I was coming here for yeah so that was that was very interesting when that all started to open up and that just led to different classes and and I, I run a spiritual growth class every week yeah. and write for it um and uh a lot of them just said, why don't you write a book? You've got all this stuff. You need to write a book. Is that all in this book? No, it's not all in there. That's I've a got new book? All, I got two more already started. So So that, uh, what are they about? Sequel. Like, uh, the next one is, um, it's actually, a, it goes into more how uh, we hold on to things and how they'll come out at a different time in our life and when you least expect them and you have to deal with them at some point or another. So it kind of continues this one. Uh, again, with uh, how thoughts affect our reality and uh, physically affect us and that sort of thing. It's not going to be as much of a self-help book as much as uh, just more of a read and mm -hmm. hopefully thought-provoking. And then I have another one that deals with the chakras, the energy centers, okay. um, to explain them a bit more and, again, how that mind-body-spirit connection works. So let me ask you, um, who are you? I'm a beautiful being of light that's here to teach others to empower themselves to find mind, body, spirit balance. Beautiful. At least that's who I am today. Well, that's beautiful. pretty uh, concise. <laughs> well, that's today. <laughs> Next what week, it may be some. Day? No. <laughs> and, every week. And that's no. a really good point, too. <laughs> you know what? Who we are is who we are in this moment. It doesn't mean, and maybe that's another reason why people might be afraid because it's yeah. like, oh, who am I in this life? No, who are you right now? And don't be afraid to change, right? That's okay. Mm -hmm. Right? It's all right. Yeah, be open to change. Be open to step outside that comfort zone because that comfort zone actually becomes a prison if it's holding you back from being all you can be. And that's a lot of times when people stay in a marriage that's not working, they stay at a job they don't like, 
um, they they do all of that, and they think it's because even though it's not a positive situation, they understand and know what's going on in it mm-hmm. and what to expect. Mm-hmm. The devil you know. Better the devil you, you know. know. Yeah. Exactly. And this is so about breaking through that. Yeah. So, But if you step outside of there, you don't know. But that's where trusting um, the universe, if you like, God, if you like, just trusting your own intuition it will guide you to where you need to go now have you had to do that a lot in your life on your spiritual journey yeah, i've had to do it too and it's been more an internal thing mm-hmm. you know like mm-hmm. i know i've been doing that it's like and i just talked about it earlier here too it's about getting out of your own way and i realized that for me that's what i was stopping myself it was easier to blame well i can't do that now because my kids are little or i've got this job and it's so handy i can't do anything else i was making up all the excuses why i couldn't move forward right, right. and so but the day that i decided that you know i'm going to do it and somehow it's going to happen and it just did so that's what you need to just step out of that so this book does it help people to get that i don't know if you want to call it courage or that trust or that's whatever that was my intent was okay. to give them kind of uh, an example of what to do if you follow this pattern if you ask yourself these questions if you do this self-examination and then take it to the next step of here here's some uh, simple steps on how to meditate and why you should set up a practice and then this is how you manifest what you wish in your life and then you also don't feel so crazy either because a lot of people think okay this is crazy (laughs) but if you're actually reading a book obviously you have experienced it before obviously you've worked with other people who've Mm -hmm. experienced it and and so that's a bit of a support system really yeah it is and and i've written a book very simply i i like things that way too that it's very plain english here's how it is and uh i don't get into um too technical a language on anything and so it's a pretty easy read for people. so hugh it's great it's not too technical and it's kept simple so maybe even i could benefit from it right <laughs> not too many pages <laughs> and you can take it to the spaceship that's right not the one i'm building though because apparently yeah. i'm not building one but but it's people it's somebody in eastern ontario is building a spaceship the right. next who the are you one. will be the one that's building the spaceship oh, okay well they might yeah they might <laughs> It might be. be. Far from well, we haven't thought about that, but I suppose. So, um, so Janice, so so really, so anybody who's maybe stuck in their life right now mm-hmm. and maybe looking for a way to break through, to make some change, maybe they're stuck in some situations they want to get out of. This is a good book for them. I would think so, and um, even like just everybody, because we all need to spiritually keep evolving. We, you ask questions, you get some answers, then you ask some more questions. You just keep going. There's no. There's no stopping us. Yes. And, and that's yes. why I was attracted to being a metaphysical minister is because that philosophy is wide open in that it's you're always asking questions and you're never saying this is the way things definitely are. Um, here's some things we've tried and this works. But um, that just opens you up to more questions, more answers, and always searching. Now, do you consider a metaphys- a, a metaphysician or the metaphysical metaphys- industry is that or section, is that... Um, a spiritual or a religion where do you because I know you just had mentioned that it's got its own well it was just last year that the Ontario government recognized it as a religion as a religion and as that we can now be ordained as ministers and perform weddings and things under that that, where before we couldn't Um, interesting okay yeah okay Um, so now in your own personal opinion it's spiritual okay because there isn't the dogma that and that was why it was took so long for it to be recognized as a religion because every other religion has a you have to do this this and this to belong to our group where with metaphysical we say we ex, um, we accept everyone's belief and respect that they're here on their own journey to discover the god of their understanding and so it left it kind of we accepted everybody else but they weren't accepted. So how do you create, how do you make something that's so abstract a religion, in other words, right? Well, that's why it was that, so... that's for the government, yeah. Yeah, yeah. from how the government. How does the government put that in a put box? In a box. They, when we exactly. weren't in a box. Yeah. 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 So because in that way, we are spiritual in that, the belief that it is, it's not what you do, it's who you are. It's, it, you, it becomes who you are. So... Yeah. Because meta means beyond, right? Meta means to be beyond. Beyond physical, Yeah. Yeah. So it's the study of things you cannot see, I guess, really. Interesting. Well, congratulations on that. Yeah, well, congratulations to Reverend Rita Browning. She's the one that fought for nine years to make it happen. Wow, that's a long journey. (laughs) Yeah. So, (laughs) 
Yeah, that's, that's good. Wow, yeah. amazing. Hmm. So what else should we uh, Workshops. Think? What kinds of workshops do you do? How about that? Sure. Sorry, need to that's a good one, Sandra. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do. I do a lot of workshops, and there is going to be one this year called Make It Happen, and my goal is to have some online workshops from that as well. Um, I do ones that teach other people Reiki. Oh, wow. Teach meditation. Um, I want to put together this year as well a hypnosis course oh, that would to be teach interesting. that one, uh, kind of specializing in past life regression. Sandra, would you like to well, learn how to... Well, hypnotize people? Well, no, my question was going to be, can everybody get hypnotized? Most everybody. Okay. Uh, the ones that can't would be um, the very elderly sometimes can't be only because usually their mind is very set on what and how things oh, are. Okay. Um, I can't make someone be hypnotized um, unless they uh, really want to be <laughs> And, Are you uh, hypnotizing me right now? Oh, sure. What no. was that? Were you trying to hypnotize me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Look into my eyes. I'm hypnotized. <laughs> it kind of worked. <laughs> it was weird. I felt something. No, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, the person, Oops. the person has to want to be hypnotized for it to really work. Um, so, and I can tell when someone's with me how deep into hypnosis they'll probably go. For what I do, just the first couple levels is deep enough. If I was getting into, and I don't do this, but into uh, hypnotizing someone for surgery, they'd have to obviously go very deep. And I have known people that have been hypnotized wow. and not taken anesthetic. Yes, I've and, heard of that. Uh, I've heard of um, people who've gone in for root canals. Yeah. And they couldn't do the anesthetic or whatever it is. They, they're mm -hmm. allergic or whatever. Yep. And the laughing gas, they couldn't. They had no alternative but to do it that way. And it was... Yeah. It and, and on that note, too, they don't just go that day and be hypnotized. They have to go and see the hypnotist for for sessions prior to that to oh, yeah, get imagine. into that mode. It doesn't just happen just that day. But uh, it's been very interesting. And I find the past life regressions have been really interesting. And everybody's different, too, when they do it. Some people are very, very clear on what they're experiencing, what they're seeing. Um, I had one woman that was extremely animated, and it was all I could do. I'm sitting here, and she has her eyes closed, of course, and she's in the hypnosis telling me things, talking <coughs> like a pirate and everything else, and kept getting up and down off her chair, moving oh back gosh. and forth. And I'm thinking, wow, I wish I had a video for this. Not that I'd show anybody because it's all confidential, but, it, but she was so into that moment. And then someone else, they may not really see anything, but they'll just maybe um, they'll have a knowing or... Um, a feeling will come over them, um, that sort of thing. So it varies all the time. And I've had some people go in between lives, which is really, really neat. What happens there yeah. in between lives? Well, it's funny. The first woman that, that uh, this happened to, that or my client, was uh, I take them into a past life, and then I'll say, now I'm on the count of three. We're going to go back into the life before this one. <clears throat> and so we were doing that, and... Uh, or I, I guess I just told her to go back a few days and after she had seen herself pass away. And she was describing mm -hmm. what she looked like in the casket and who was in the house, and she was able to go through the house. And I thought, well, if she's doing that and she's already physically dead, then she's experiencing this as in spirit. Right. Uh -huh. And she wasn't really realizing that. as She's, t she's just telling me what she's seeing. Uh -huh. And so then I asked her, let's just move ahead a little bit yeah. in this. So then the next thing she said that um, she could was hard to identify where she was she says because there's nothing but there's everything and she was mm -hmm. saying that she could see but she had no eyes and she said i know but i don't have a body and she said it's very i said are you consciousness and she said yes that's it and then she said there was like lights around her and then i said is there anyone else with you and then she just got very calm in her expression and she smiled and she said god is everywhere and I said, are you being told anything? And she says, yeah, i got to go back. And that was for this <laughs> lifetime. And she said, I have to go back and do something with my life. I can't do the same as I did last time. So, And it was interesting because in this lifetime, she had an urgency to do as much and learn as much as she could. Did, when, when she said, um, yeah, i got to wow. go back, did, that, did you sense any sense of disappointment? That she would she rather wanted... have stayed where okay. she was. 
And most that's, people are like that. They go into yeah. that spot. They, um, they have no problem really coming back, but they like where they are. There's not a fear. Oh, I've so had amazing. people go back and say that I think I've passed over now. There's, they'll recognize someone who's come to meet them. They describe, uh, some have described where they go into like a room where they're um, just kept quiet for a while. And they said it's like they have to rest. And then uh, when they kind of come out of this rest, they tell everybody about their adventure here on Earth, what had happened. Wow. That's yeah. So is it fair to say that this is probably one of the, what you like the most of it? Because you do quite a few things. You, yeah. I mean, is, is this your favorite thing to do or do you look for? I, I don't know if I could pinpoint it. It's all, to me, it's all connected. It's all to do with energy. It's all spiritual work. Um, it all seems to come to that. Sometimes when I'm doing Reiki on someone, I pick up something for mm-hmm. them, a mm-hmm. message for them that mm-hmm. I tell them. Or so you're part psychic too, right? Oh so yeah, you're, you're I do intuitive uh, readings and things like that for people. I call okay. it spiritual coaching okay. because that's what it, it ends up being. And, uh, and people come to me for that. It's usually someone looking to make a change. They want to know how to go about it. They already have all that knowledge inside them. It's just sometimes you need a little, someone to help pull it out. So... That's kind of what I do. I just now. Do you um, do you do those over the phone? Do you do those in person? Uh, usually in person or okay. email. Okay. I have done them over the phone before. I haven't done Skype yet, but that's an option as well. But you don't need to be in person to do the intuitive. I don't need to be in person. No, I I have I've done quite a few by email, and all I need is a person's name and, and You can tune in just through the email. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I just kind of go into my meditation, and I have I. My peeps that I ask <laughs> to help me. And that was my next question. Who are your peeps? peeps. <laughs> I call on the Archangel Shamuel, and then I have a spirit guide. Shamuel is the messenger mm. between the divine and man. So I, I have it's... never heard of Shamuel. No? Have you ever heard of a Shamuel? Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the, div- the messenger between man and the, the universe? Divine? Is he oh, mentioned the in the Bible, Shamuel? I'm Shamuel. not sure if Shamuel is or not. Oh. I know it's one of the 72 angels that are... I think in the, um, I'm not sure where it came from, but there are the 72 angels that are mentioned, and he is one of them. And how did you first connect with, our, or with he's an archangel? Mm-hmm. How did you first connect with Archangel Shamuel? Okay, so now it gets bizarre because... Well, that's good. We're all about bizarre. <laughs> I was actually in bed one night, and I, was, I had done a discussion on the archangels with my, one of my classes. And I was told, in my head, to go and pull out that list and and look up this angel's name and uh, I wasn't given that particular name yet but then when I went to pull out my card I was told to pull my Doreen virtue cards out and I would find the the angel I needed and so I looked it up and I was I had this name Shamuel and I thought I don't even remember that name but there was one card in the deck and that was who it was. So then I looked up the meaning of who Shamuel was, and that's who I've always called well, That's on. total guidance. It's also a very good archangel to have because it's the archangel to help you find lost items. So if you ever lose anything, honestly... Okay, oh, yeah. close up on that. He loses these all the time. <laughs> so what can he do? Just ask for Archangel Shamuel to help you find whatever it is you're looking for. There you go. Try that next time, which will be probably in about an hour. It could be. It could be. And I tell you, it works. (laughs) Yeah. So I just ask for a message. Say if I was doing it for Hugh, I'd just say, you know, I'm going to uh, be open to receive a message to channel through for Hugh. Do so as I count back from from 10 to 1. And I just take some deep breaths as if I'm going into a meditation. I call on the archangel and my spirit guide and just start typing out whatever comes through to me so he can email you for wherever you are even if you're on vacation in france he can say hey i lost my rings again oh don't ask me you have to ask shamuel i don't i don't do that okay okay. that's when she's helping her clients to help himself yeah Yeah. that's great and that's you know that's a really good point because a lot of healers will say i'm not i'm not healing you no i'm just a conduit? A vessel. Or? Yeah, okay. a vessel through. When I teach Reiki, that's what we say. We're a vessel through which the universal life force flows. You know, it's that's what we're just And that's why you always have to ask their permission, right? Mm-hmm. The same when you're doing a reading, you just don't start reading somebody. That you're, that's an invasion of someone's space, someone's mm-hmm. energy. So, Even though I've come to you, you still will ask me. Mm-hmm. Okay. 
I just say, are you ready? And, and I also ask you not to shoot the messenger <laughs> because I'm just going to tell you whatever comes to me. So, you know. Don't, don't take it. Yeah. It's not me. It's not me, honest. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but no. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Very, very cool. So you do quite a bit. Yeah, I do. And then, like I said, for me, one just kind of blended into the other, and I just combine all that when I write. Um, I use kind of all that experience and, and uh, that I've had with my clients and my own training, and I put that into the workshops and books and things like that. And do you yeah. have an, a workshop coming up? Um, not right away. I'm working on the one for Make It Happen. Okay. I do have an event this weekend in the big town of Marmara. We celebrate International Women's Day. Um, although it's the 8th, we will be having our celebration on Saturday. It's called Women in Wellness, and there will be um, vendors and practitioners there in the holistic field, some readers and things. Oh, lovely. And it's free to the public, so we just love to have people come in. And where is it in Marmara? It's at the uh, community center, which is located uh, above the arena there on Victoria Avenue. And, and where is Marmara? It is on Highway 7. It's um, halfway between Ottawa and Toronto. It's 40 kilometers east of Peterborough. There you go. Okay, so, so if you can make it to Peterborough, just keep on going. Okay. You'll be there in about 40 minutes. <laughs> so it's about a two-hour drive it then. It is. Well, two okay. hours sounds like Toronto. a fun thing to do. It does. Yes, it sounds it like is. a fun we have, And I have actually had clients from the Toronto and Oshawa area come down to me. So yeah. it's nice. And that's coming up this weekend? That's this weekend from 11 till 4. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Okay, so you got the book. The website, I think we put it up, mindfuljourney.ca. Correct. And, and you can coach people and do these readings and the hypnotherapy. You kind of remind me a little bit of Dolores Cannon, because didn't yes. she start with the uh, the regression stuff and then she got into all yeah, the I other think, stuff? I think so, yeah, with the regression things, yeah. yeah. And, it's, uh, and, and the funny thing is I find for myself, like 20 years ago, I wouldn't even have talked to you about past life regression. I wouldn't even believed in it or anything. And uh, but to me, it just answers so many questions about things. And mm. um, what is yeah. yeah? What does it tell us about the nature of life? The nature of life. Yeah. To me, it explains that we're all energy, yeah. and we're no different. Everything is energy. Just and like energy, that woman. Yeah, and I mean, energy is transformed. It's yeah. not you can't destroy energy, but you can transform it into something else. So yeah. when we leave this body, our energy, our spirit, still exists, only in a different form. And then there will be a point when that spirit will come back again or can come back again, Mm. Um, whether it's here or who knows. Maybe it's on that spaceship somewhere, but it's who's to say. Wow, interesting. Mm -hmm. I I mean, that speaks to what that woman you had dead who who was Mm -hmm. in between lives when she said God is everywhere. Er, er, everything and nothing. So I and think and there's nothing. They're not fearing anything. Yeah. It's just this is the way. It seemed to be more the natural way to be. Mm-hmm. And this was something that was. Oh, let's go do that for a while. Mm. It's kind of like going and grabbing a piece of pizza. Mm. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs> Make it vegan. That's right. With a gluten-free crust. Uh, absolutely, 100%. <laughs> it's actually so much healthier anyway it is. to be gluten-free. It's so much healthier. And when you're vegan, you actually notice the difference. You actually do because you can feel the weighting down when you're eating all that wheat. So you can feel it in your body, and it, it, it does slow you down. So naturally, I have moved to a gluten-free diet, but just through feeling better. That's right. Well, that's good. <laughs> I can see he's right on board. Late. I am on board with feeling the space good. Space board. Mm-hmm. Space boards. Well, this has been great. Uh, this has been Thank awesome. Janice. This is so awesome. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for having me. And I'm really looking forward to reading the book because I, too, want to make it happen. That's right. Right? Don't we all? Yeah. Don't we all? So I guess that's it for the show today. It was a great show. It was, an, we, it was a great show. We had so many different guests. We, we really were, went, we, we made it happen for a lot of, in a lot of different ways. I think we covered all the bases today. Yeah, I think we did, actually. Which was great. So thank you, Sandra. Thank you, Hugh. And thank you, Janice, for you. being our final guest today. Thank you. Okay. So we'll see you all next time. Probably tomorrow. <laughs>